Welcome to this video where we'll be discussing the steps involved with the procurement process for a highly customized product. The process is broken down into five phases which covers initial concept idea through to production launch and beyond. Phase 1 partner selection. Phase 2 non-recurring engineering and sampling. Phase 3 pre-production. Phase 4 is production and phase five, continuous improvement. This is what the complete flowchart looks like, which is too difficult to see in detail in one go. So in order to help better understand each of the steps, we have separated out the elements in each of the phases. So let's look at the partner selection phase. Initially, you'll need to define your product specification sheet. The purpose of this document is to provide information to a manufacturer on what is being produced and the specific requirements associated with each aspect of the design. The next step is to send out the request for quotation pack. It is often the case and also good practice to send out details of a similar product in order to get rough quotations first. This allows you to compare quotes from different suppliers without disclosing the full information to too many companies. Once you have a number of quotations in, you can compare these and select the suppliers you wish to send the full technical detailed RFQ pack to. This pack should include all your technical drawings, specification details of different parts, estimated quantities per year, and any information that will help potential supply partners to provide the fullest quotations they can. Once you get your quotations back from the suppliers you approached, it is time to create a short list of potential suppliers that you feel are the best match to your requirements. After you have created a short list, you need to carry out your due diligence on those suppliers to determine the best you can their legitimacy. This should be followed up with a factory or supplier audit, which will provide a detailed report and findings. If you are happy with the results, you can feel comfortable that you have found a suitable manufacturing partner. The next phase is the non-recurring engineering and sampling phase. This is where any tooling, for example, will be commissioned. The first step is to have a business project review meeting with your supplier to go through the project plan in detail with respect to their involvement. Be sure to outline your expectations and the deliverables during this meeting. The next step is to start working on an agreement or contract for all of your non-recurring engineering items. In parallel, you need to start the prototype and sample process. This is where the supplier will work on producing samples to your specifications in order for you to review them and make changes where required. Once you are happy with the results from this step, you should approve and sign off the samples as acceptable. Your new product introduction plan should be updated at this stage in the process to reflect any implemented changes that may impact on the plan. An OEM stroke ODM agreement should be created that covers every detail of the product supply. This will be your manufacturing contract once you are ready to hit the green lights. Once these steps have been completed, it is now time for you to place the order and pay the initial amount set against the PO for your NRE items. Once you place the orders for tooling, films or code, the information provided would have been officially released through your document control procedure. Any change or deviation to print that requires official release data to be updated must be done through your engineering change request. This way, every change is documented and is traceable in the future. Once NRE items have been completed to the stage where products can be produced from them, you need to check the parts. These parts will be the first off from the tools and in general would require some slight modifications before parts being produced are acceptable. Once the supplier is happy with the way that the tooling is operating, for example, they would submit final samples for review and verification and official sign-off by you. The next step in this phase 
is the actual product and NRE item sign-off. This would include you checking every aspect of the parts being produced, as well as signing off the functionality and the working state of the NRE item itself. This would be a milestone in your new product introduction plan. It would be the production ready milestone. It also concludes the NRE and sampling phase. Moving on to phase three, this is the pre-production phase. It is important to have a follow-up meeting with your supplier at this stage of your new product introduction plan. You need to go through the agreement and cover all the critical elements and deliverables, as well as setting expectations for production. The next step is to place the order for the initial production quantity. This also means you need to be paying the initial amount against the purchase order. A key aspect of getting product manufactured correctly in mass production is repeatability and part of that is to have a good set of work instructions. This is something the supplier will work on. However, you should be involved in the process particularly when it comes to the more technical aspects or some of the critical to quality features of your product. At this stage, you should be reviewing and updating your new product introduction plan, in particular, the production launch schedule. Every manufacturing process should have a process control plan, and this is something you need to generate in conjunction with your supply partner. In some cases, there may be the need to implement software at the supplier's factory or the need to implement a process that involves using new software now is the time to implement this. Every product needs a test plan that clearly identifies what needs to be tested and how it should be tested, along with the frequency of tests. Your test plan should also state what actions need to be taken if test results fall outside the limits you have indicated. The last step in the pre-production phase is to conduct a pilot run. This should be conducted with the intended mass production setup, including all of the correct tooling, test equipment, procedures and processes that will be in place, as well as the actual operators that will be assigned to build your product. A trial run may involve a number of different runs with iterative improvements between each of those runs, which ultimately results in the process being signed off as production ready. This will be your milestone in your project plan for production ready state. You can now move into the production phase. Now the production phase consists of the process of manufacturing your products, ensuring that the products are acceptable to be shipped and then shipping those products to your final destination. It is paramount that you follow up with your supplier throughout the entire production process and obtain regular progress reports. Product inspection is another critical step within the process. You can either opt for the during production inspection or wait until everything has been completed and carry out a final random inspection. Either way, you need to have your goods inspected before they leave the factory and certainly before you pay the balance of the purchase order. Carrying out an inspection while goods are still at the factory allows you to work with your supplier on any required corrective actions. Once everything has been signed off and you are happy that your order is ready to be shipped, it is time to arrange all of the logistics of shipping your goods to the destination you need them sent to. Before goods are sent, depending upon your payment agreement, you would generally need to pay the balance of the purchase order. Now this will be another payment milestone in your plan. For ongoing production, your product test results would be analyzed against a test plan you already have in place. This allows you to monitor performance and other key information and KPIs. The final phase of the process is continuous improvement. This phase is all about working with your supply partner and improving every aspect of the business, from production through to process and procedures, as well as building the overall relationship and the partnership. 
One aspect of this phase is working with your supplier on key performance indicators or KPIs. KPIs are assorted variables that organizations use to assess, analyze, and track manufacturing processes. These performance measures are commonly used to evaluate success in relation to goals and objectives. Supplier development is another key step during this phase. Supplier development is the process of working with your supplier on a one-to-one -one basis to improve their performance for the benefit of your organization. Supplier development should lead to improvements in the total added value from the supplier in terms of product or services they offer, business processes and performance, improvements that lead to better lead times and delivery, for example. Now that concludes the walkthrough of the entire procurement process for a highly customized product. We hope you found this of interest and if you have any comments, please leave them below and we'll be sure to come back to you.